Now, the uh, alchemical procedure that is most commonly known is relating to two distinct ends. One is the creation of the philosopher's stone, and the other is the uh, brewing of the philosophical medicine, the elixir of life. So the uh, stone in itself represents uh, the body of wisdom purified, and the universal medicine represents the soul. The medicine of immortality must be derived from things that have a birth and death within themselves. In other words, the nutrition that is given off may cause the primitive element to be lost. But its power goes on, it does not die, it simply reincarnates on a higher level. For when we take into ourselves basic elements, they are reborn in us, and therefore pass through a process of evolution as they are used by the human being to maintain the economy of life. So in the beginning, the alchemist must find a quiet place to work. He must have his little laboratory. Well, laboratory in his day was a furnace, a fireplace, a bunch of bottles, and a few old books to guide his way. But to us, the laboratory is actually a body where of so free from interference and confusion that he can retire into it when he so wills. In other words, the laboratory is his own internal. Not his eternal, but his internal. It is that part of himself which is always ca capable of being reduced to a harmonious situation. The personal life must be basically harmonious. Now, a lot of people feel that uh, this is not possible, that there is no answer to all these grievances and griefs that beset us and affect us. But the alchemist says, you are after the most valuable thing in the world. And if you're hoping to get it, you must earn it. You must make adjustments that will never be required of anyone except for this purpose. So to create a quiet place within the self for the contemplation of the symbols of regeneration, this is very vital. It does not mean, however, that the person has to become a constant uh, celled monk or mysterious acolyte. He does not have to retire from life. He simply has to retire from confusion. He has to reject the idea of confusion within himself. The acceptance of confusion is a form of ignorance. It is not real, but we all are subject to it. But confusion also means waste of energy, waste of time, depletion, and inability in that state to contact a deeper and higher part of ourselves. This we find in our Oriental philosophies in the series of Yoga and Vedanta. Here we find the mystery of the chakras, and the chakras are the seven seals of, seven, of revelation, and the seven seals of revelation are actually the seven sacred metals of the alchemical transmutation. It's all part of one thing. Well, 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 well I can take this now after this. I mean, I've covered the cycles. Um, I can, I could pretty much, I, I pretty much tell you what the religion of the New World Order is as well. Okay. <laughs> do, you okay. Want, do you want to know that? I'd love to. Yeah, share with us. But basically, yeah. Well, basically, um, if you read in Revelations, um, chapter eleven, verse twelve, now a great sign appeared in heaven: a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Remember the moon because that symbolizes Isis. Mm. Um, and on her head, a gown of twelve stars, like the twelve stars of the EU flag. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, in Revelations, it refers to the breaking of the seven seals, mm -hmm. right? In the Mayan prophecies, for Chilam, a high priest, in 1560, um, there was a prophecy written about um, the arrival of Christianity, and the arrival, you know, this was like the end of uh, the Mayan calendar prophecies and so on. He said, uh, there the masters of our souls arrived, there the counties were distributed to their chiefs, there we began to learn the holy faith, there water began to enter our heads. There we laid the foundations of the high church, the palace of God. There the principle of the seven sacraments were founded. So seven again, seven seals in Revelation, mm. seven sacraments in the main prophecies. Mm. And I do Reiki, so I know what the seven of and the seven chakras. Mm. Seven sacraments, seven chakras, 
same words, same thing to me. Yeah. And as a confirmation of that, um, on my blog, there's um, some more deciphering of uh, imagery. And if you have an issue of the UK passport from um, 1998, uh, I think that's when mine was issued, mm -hmm. there's an image of the road, the thistle and the daffodil, which are the flowers of England, Scotland and Wales. Mm -hmm. But as I've said, these images have two meanings and they have two, you know, they, they have a duality. And this image that no one knows what it is, it's on a page called Reserved for Observations Only with a number 11 on the page. Um, it's basically showing a diagram of the chakra system. Mm. Um, and you correlate that because basically the heart chakra lines up with an image of a heart and the solar plexus chakra aligns up with an image of the sun. Mm. So, so basically you've got this thing, but even more concerning, or not concerning, on the root chakra and the crown chakra, it's signed with an inverted pentagram. Mm -hmm. Really? So, yeah, so you think about that, there's an inverted pen pentagram on your crown chakra and your root chakra. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what that's symbolically saying, but it's obviously involving spiritualism. Yeah. And uh, if this is in the UK passport, I mean, beyond me that our government have ever acknowledged the chakras.